Welcome to Okaloosa Today, local news and information. Connecting the communities of Fulton Beach, Destin, and Okaloosa County. Welcome to the Okaloosa Today Show. We are on Okaloosa Island where much activity is taking place in preparation for the new Veterans Park. And we have our commissioner chairman from Okaloosa County, Don Amons, to give us all the details. Welcome, Don. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being with us. How did this become Veterans Park? Well, what happened was over several years we've had numerous workshops and the public's been very consistent on trying to keep a lot of it natural. Uh, and with the declining uh, economy that we have here, we've reached out to create partnerships in the communities to help fund it and to keep it uh, as much as we can a natural park. So basically by dedicating um, a little over 14 acres to keep it at Veterans Park, we're hoping that the, the veterans in the communities, because they've given so much, uh, will come out and have events here enjoy it and that preserves it um, for future citizens of the county um, to have walking trails and so forth. And it's a large park, I mean it's a huge area, just 14 acres are going to be preserved completely natural and enhanced with boardwalks so you, so you can actually get out and enjoy it a little bit. But look at, look at the wildlife a little bit more up close. Can you talk right. about the different acreages and the different entities that are going to be involved out here? Yeah, the uh, partnerships that we've done is the uh, Gulf Coast uh, Marine Center, uh, which obviously has to do with the hatchery and, and, and fish. And then we have the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge, which is about partnerships and taking care of a lot of our injured animals and as you know as development goes on we impact their environments. And they're going to have about 3.6 acres and, and these acres aren't exact but it's close. Right <laughs> and uh, and then we're going to have wild willies uh, that's going to have a zip line and some adventure things. They might also have uh, fishing parks where some of the current ponds that we have here on the property they might work something out with fishing pole and children but the some of the income from wild willies in the uh, Gulf Coast Marine Life Center uh, will help pay for a lot of the park improvements and so forth and keep it up which in turn saves us tax dollars that's right and that's a one that's a huge attribute to this is, is that we'll actually pay for the upkeep with these other partnerships that are out here which will be great because it does cost money to keep these places natural as you can see we there's actually a lot of work to be done out here initially to uh, to make it a little a little more beautiful and um, and of course Wild Willies is going to be just under three acres and then the uh, the Emerald Coast Marine Life Center will be just under five acres so so I just wanted folks to know exactly what they're, you know, not exactly, but close to what, what the different areas are going to be. And again, 14 acres for the natural parks, or for our veterans park, as we're calling it. So, um, so the county commissioners decided to name it Veterans Park. Did, did, what was your feeling on that? Did I know that you, you kind of initiated that, and do you want to talk about that at all, Well, Don? just real quick, you know, the veterans um, have done so much, the combat veterans, uh, the veterans uh, as a whole, and we really don't have any place. Some of the municipalities have memorials and so forth for the uh, different veterans groups. But the biggest thing is most of the veterans groups don't have outdoor places when we do um, ceremonies for the veterans groups they're at Beal and Memorial and so forth and you know a lot of people give back to this community and a lot of insight goes in some people want memorials some people say wouldn't it be great to have a Vietnam Memorial a World War II Memorial like some of the other areas do and, and this designates this area strictly for this so I mean you can do different phases to bring in different things but the, the probably the largest thing is on all the future land use maps and all this, this is designated as a park. So in years back, people said, well, put condos, put hotel, what's the best use? By designating it Veterans Park, it limits what can be out here and so forth. And that's what the community wanted. They want a place for their grandkids to fly kites and, and so forth and, and have events and, and fundraisers and, 
and I think it ties in uh, real well with the conference center as well. And a great way to honor our veterans too, of course. And and what a great thing mentioning the convention center. They're going to have an actual um, a little. A place where they can have outdoor events, you know, kind of a cement platform pavilion type of area uh, within the area as well. And but but again, this 14 acres. I mean, imagine being at a convention and and having a break, and actually instead of just being able to walk out in the hall or walk outside, you can actually enjoy the park and and take you know take a trail through the boardwalks and through the beach areas and actually get away from the convention for a little while and get some fresh air. So I think it's going to be a wonderful advantage for uh, the tourists, for our visitors, our residents, everyone. Well, and the other thing is, you know, and I don't want to leave it out because it's so big to the community, the additional boat parking and boat ramps that will also be part of this park that will tie into the ramps at Marlar Park. So even right. though there are two different names, you know, we all know we have a large boating population and we all look for places to, to launch boats and so forth. So some of this park area will be uh, additional boat parking and, and I think that will allow more folks to use it as well. Right, and that's been a, a large request because we did incorporate the uh, the public into, into some of these ideas and we'll get to that in a minute. But um, so they're going to have new boardwalks, a beach area, additional boat parking. So we talked about all that. Now let's talk a little bit about each one of the entities out here. And let's start with Wild Willies. Wild Willies, again, just under three acres out here. Uh, we have a, a rendering of, of what that's going to look like. They've already torn down the building. Don, did you yeah. see that? Yeah, they did. And, um, you know, part of the, when we did the leases with them, they had to uh, get their development order and get going. And, and I'm happy to say that both Wild Willies and the Gulf Coast Life Center both got their development orders last week and they both plan on breaking ground in December. Uh, so for land fast. to be vacant uh, and they're trying to be up by March of 2013, so they're doing what they said they were going to do and we're moving right along and uh, I think uh, you know it's something that we're all going to be proud of. So they've demoed the uh, the building for the Golf Island Center and they're going to actually still have miniature golf. They're just going to really renovate that whole golf course, still have a miniature golf course for, for everyone to enjoy. Uh, they're going to have zip lines, skywalk, yeah, trampolines, interactive uh, things that can, some things that will move in and move out and change out. So right. that'll be kind of an interesting thing. So a lot of fun for our families out here. And I think they're going to have a pizza eatery and, and so forth, but it's all going to be uh, kid family type oriented. Right. Um, Yogurt. Out here. Yeah. So that'll be neat. That'll be a lot of fun. And now I know that the fishermen, the restaurants and the citizens are very, very excited about the the Gulf Coast Marine Life Center. So let's talk about that and what that means. Well, that's, um, that's doing really, really well. Um, like I said, they, they have their development order. Um, I've seen um, projections of their plans. Most of it's gonna be inside. I think originally, I know I did, I envisioned big, huge tanks everywhere and I thought, well, that might be a little ugly. Um, however, most of it's gonna be indoors um, because they need the climate control. Um, you know, the, the first fish that they're looking at uh, breeding there uh, will be um, snapper and grouper out of there. And, you know, we can't release or they can't release any fish or anything without going through game and fish and U.S. fisheries. And their hope is that in a perfect world, and if all the regulating agencies allow them to, they're hoping to release 50,000 fish um, by the early of next summer. Um, into the waterways if they're allowed to and I think that'll be huge because I think if I was a tourist and I was coming down here to fish and somebody just released 50,000 fish uh, I would probably look there um, more than others but a lot of that's going to depend on you know what size the state and the federal government says they need to be before they're released uh, and so forth and you know some people we had issues at the beginning as far as what's going to happen to the fish waste and so forth and uh, all the water will be reclaimed. None of it will go back into the bayous and so forth. Um, and they'll have and a, then reused, and actually reused, recycled, and uh, saved because water Because they're going to well. be also partnering with LSU to do a coastal plants. So when we need them for beach restoration and all, we'll be able to get them here locally and keep the money here locally. 
and then uh, any surplus of the waste go in these clear plastic tubes and they're sold to farms all over the southeast for fertilizer. Is that so, right? Uh, so even that produces a little bit of income, but you know, it's real important the public said at the beginning, we don't want anything going back to the waterways, we want them to be self-sufficient, and that's exactly what they have to do. Uh, and there, there are no odors or anything like that. Um, some of the guys have been to 12 to 14 fisheries and looked at them, uh -huh. and there are no odors from it. And I think this is gonna be a first-class place uh, it's going to be very educational with children. My understanding is that children will be able to identify certain fish and go home and track the fish as it grows. Oh, uh, is that right? So uh, I, I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities with education as well. So that, that kind of handles a couple of the E questions that we had. We did have a lot of questions. I know citizens were interested very much and in, had some environmental concerns and, and hopefully Don has answered some of those questions for everyone and um, that, you know, and also uh, they're going to actually enhance the environment through the fishery, through uh, actually enhancing our populations of fish and, uh, and not just fish, oysters, shellfish too as well, yes, right? So. Yes, ma'am. And then uh, the other great part about it is economically it's going to be huge because uh, the governors of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, they're all on board uh, with this and, and they want a partnership with Florida. So I believe this is going to turn in a regional project. You know, we're not going to actually grow the large fish necessarily here. They're going to work on the uh, featherlings and so forth and they'll probably partnership down the road uh, with the surplus to different individuals and that'll keep, you know, 87% of the fish comes from outside the United States. Right, so that'll and that's be another important to mention, and, and I think that's a, that's a great point about this, is that whereas a lot of our fish, and, and Don's talking about the fish that we buy in the grocery, you know, doesn't come not only from our area, but doesn't come from our country. So, so can you explain that, how that works, Don? Well, basically what it is, a lot of foreign countries uh, produce fish in places that you and I wouldn't necessarily want to eat the fish that came out of there. But less than 2% of all the fish that imports in the United States is inspected through USDA. So we really don't know what we're getting. Right. And you know, the other thing about this is there's been so much interest with even outside our county that you know, for a nonprofit company to come in here and say, we're gonna raise our own money. We're not asking for any money uh, from the taxpayers. You know, they have already raised enough money since they got the lease here to pay for phase one, which is a few million dollars. And I just don't know of too many companies, even though it's nonprofit, that can raise that much money in that short amount of time that can say phase one, which is a few million dollars is paid for. Right, right. So, so not only will we able, be able to buy local fish in the local grocery store, but also the restaurants will be able to uh, access purchase right the florida fish. restaurant association has endorsed this project uh, they're behind it hundred uh, percent according to mr crawl and they think it's an excellent par partnership i believe uh, bay county is also coming on board they want a partnership and i believe there's some other counties that are involved as well uh, franklin county for oysters and crabs and uh, and then we have a foreign country japan who has sent uh, letters. They're the only place in the world that raises bluefin tuna, and they have asked a partnership here because the Gulf um, is populated with it, and you know it's $80 a pound for that fish. Oh my goodness. So I think it's pretty neat that foreign countries, foreign in the U.S., are wanting a partnership with this as well. So I think the education and, and the economics are just going to be fantastic. So, so how does it get to the restaurants, to the grocery stores? Did the fisher? Is it through the fishermen? Is it through the restaurant association? Is it? Well, I think the first thing they're going to do is obviously raise the fingerlings and try to repopulate the fish out here first. I think that's going to be the number one goal. Priority. If U.S. fisheries and game and fish allow them to do that, uh, I think that will help our fishermen across the Gulf Coast, okay. and that will be the first economic boom. Then after that, if there's still fingerlings and stuff left over, over time, then I think they'll be marketed to what they call grow out facilities in the private sector. They'll grow them out um, and then they'll sell them to the different 
restaurants and so forth. So that's how the system works. And, and, and yes, you mentioned a huge economic impact to the area. I mean, I mean it's going to be significant. So, so that's all great news. Let's see. We, can, we are ready to talk about Oh, and the education, I will just touch on a little bit. Very interactive. We did touch on it a little bit. A huge community outreach and uh, education for pre-K through 12th grade. So a lot of opportunities there, too. The Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge. Has, we got to get through this. Yeah, the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge. You know, their uh, continued partner, they're at our old fire station on the island right now. They do a fantastic job. Uh, part of their, they have two phases, I call them two phases. One phase is a veterinarian to take care of the animals, which you see a lot. And the other thing is they applied last year for a ch charter school through Okaloosa County School Board. So they're going to also try to do a charter school out here as well. So they've been raising money for that as well. And if all, if the if everybody's about education and working with our children, I think it's a great partnership. I think the Wildlife Refuge on groundbreaking for Veterans Park, I think they're gonna bring their mascots out here and let the folks see a lot of the animals that can't be released right. back. And Most people are familiar with the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge and, and they've seen the animals and, and had that interaction. So so they've been around the, in the community for a long time and, and doing wonderful things and now they're going to be have a really great facility out here to work from and to help the animals and again to educate our students. So two of these entities really are going to provide education between the Marine Life Center and the, uh, and the Emerald Coast Coast Wildlife Refuge. Uh, got about one minute, Don. Anything else to add? No, I would just tell people if you have questions, you know, call us, uh, call the, the marketing folks and the presidents of these different corporations. Uh, if something's bothering you, ask the question. Let's get them answered. There's a lot of rumors out there everywhere. There always is. But, uh, you know, take the time to call myself. I'll forward it to whoever. Uh, to get them the answers and so forth and we really appreciate everybody getting involved because this is truly a community partnership. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, answering all of our questions about this new area out here for, for all of those citizens who, who wanted some answers to their questions and wanted to know what, what we're doing out here because you're going to see a lot of activity out here in future months. And then also I want to remind everybody that Okaloosa Today is a combined show with the uh, Okaloosa County in which I'm the public information officer, the city of Destin, and the city of Fort Walton Beach. And I'm going to close with my public information update. We do have a picture uh, for at Veterans Park for our uh for our veterans, we actually have a picture of Colonel Slife at the recent Hurlburt Open House uh, given uh, Commissioner Amons, our chairman this year, an, an appreciation award. So I wanted to share that with you. And, and, and again, we try to interact with our military as much as possible, and we appreciate you. Also, I want to mention that Musical Echoes Flute Festival, the largest Native American flute art festival in America, is, uh, is calling artists if they want to participate in that. So you can go to musicalechoes.org to get inf more information on that. And the new University of Florida Okaloosa County Extension Office opens on November the 5th in Crestview at 3098 Airport Road. And they are also gearing up for the Economic Living Expo in February. So, And they're looking for vendors. So you can contact the Extension Office and please go tour their new building in Crestview. And lastly, I also want to mention Viva Florida. I'm trying to really uh, get everyone involved in Viva Florida because it is a huge benefit for Okaloosa County, for our museums, for our history, for our events, for our businesses to get involved and get engaged and celebrate Florida's 500th anniversary in 2013. And you can actually promote your events and promote Okaloosa County through Viva Florida. So this is it. Up next is Doug Rayner from the City of Destin.